Yo, what's up everybody? And in today's video, I'm gonna be ranking your guys' hot takes. It's not just gonna be your guys', I got some pros to DM me their hot takes and I will be ranking those too. A hot take in Fortnite is something that most people will not agree with, but you will stand by forever. I got all of these hot takes from the comments of a community post. So if you guys wanna be in another video, make sure you guys keep looking at my community posts. I say if it's gonna be in a video or not. If you guys want to be in a part two of this, make sure you guys comment your hot takes down below. And if we get enough, I'll make sure to do a part two. But before we get into this video, make sure you guys subscribe and consider becoming a member. Members get a bunch of cool perks like having me added on Fortnite to even helping me decide what video I'm going to make next. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you go to the first link in the description. But let's get into this video. So the first hot take we have is from Brayden. He says, Peterbot is as good as Prime Mongrel and Clicks is never winning in FNCS. Starting off with the first part of that about Peterbot being as good as Prime Mongrel, I completely agree. Not only has Peterbot won an FNCS and has dominated solo cash cups this season, he's easily the best player in the world right now. Even though Prime Mongrel won an FNCS, I don't even think he's close to where Peterbot is right now. And then on to the second part of that, Clix is never winning an FNCS. I don't think it's fair to say any tier 1 player can never win an FNCS when it all comes down to RNG and grand finals whether you're contested or not. And with Clix being a big streamer, of course he's going to have an ego and land wherever the best POI is. So as long as he keeps doing that, I don't think he'll ever be uncontested in grands. Not to mention that him and his duo Epic Whale have not been doing good recently. And I think that comes from a lot of factors, but I'm not going to talk about those in this video. But I think it is fair to say that I think Clix will never win an FNCS as long as he keeps landing the best POIs in the game. So for this hot take, I'm going to put it in A. Our next hot take is from No Mercy, and he says Mongrel is the most overrated pro in Fortnite. And now I might get some hate for this, but I completely agree with it. I've seen countless people say Mongrel is the GOAT of Fortnite and the best player to ever do it. And while Mongrel has been good, I don't think he's been tier 1 since Season X. When Mongrel won FNCS with Mitro and Taysen, I think that was all because of Taysen. Say Mongrel and Mitro had Queezy as their IGL instead of Taysen, I don't think they would have even made Grand Finals. And by no means am I calling Mongrel a bad player. He does his job. His job is to get kills and he does that perfectly. But I don't think he's a god like some people make him out to be. And when I say this, I mean no hate to Mongrel. It's just when you're a big streamer and you have a really young fan base, they tend to idolize you and think you're the best player ever. The same happened to Clicks. Back in chapter two, season one, I was a big Clicks fan and I used to think he was the best player ever. But as I matured, I realized that streaming is not everything. Just cause you go 100-0 in box fights does not make you the best player in the world. It might make you the best box fighter in the world, but that is not the whole game. So for this take, I'm gonna put it in S cause I completely agree with it. But before we get into our next take, make sure you guys stick around to the end cause that's where I'm putting the pro hot takes. It's not just some random pro, it is a big pro that all of you guys know and is one of Clix's ex-teammates. Our next hot take comes from G-Team and he says items that are less skillful such as shockwaves and crash pads should still be competitive because they make the game more entertaining. Now there's two parts to this hot take, do I want to think about it as a competitor or as a viewer? As a viewer, I completely agree that it makes it more entertaining, but as a competitor, it is very bad for the game. Not only are they less skillful, like you said, they add server lag and makes the endgame so much more laggy. Think about in Chapter 2 Season 4, everybody in endgame was bouncer shockwave and crash pad rotating in endgame, and think about all the builds that it has to break. Those builds breaking have to render for everybody in the game and will cause so much server lag. And also thinking about it as a viewer, sometimes it's very entertaining, but most of the time there's way too much going on for the average viewer to track what's happening. Most endgames just end up looking like a Valorant site take. And with all that information, I'm going to put this take and see. Our next hot take is from Complex and he says the World Cup will never happen again. And I completely agree with this. The World Cup will never happen again because it was a $30 million prize pool over two days. Fortnite is the biggest game of all time and makes the most money out of any esport and that is nowhere close to being sustainable. The only way I ever see World Cup coming back is if they stop doing FNCSs and have a yearly World Cup. I don't know how qualifiers would work for that, because if there's no FNCS, how are we going to know who's the best on the region to invite them to the LAN? And honestly, I don't think having no FNCSs is enough. $30 million is a lot. We might have to cut out every single cash cup too. And there's no way Fortnite will ever do that. And that's why there will never be another World Cup ever again. So for that, I'm going to put this take in S. Our next hot take is from No Mercy again, and he says the competitive prize pools are much better now than they used to be and far more sustainable. I 100% agree with that. What I was just talking about World Cup with the prize pools being unsustainable, it will never happen again. They used to be giving away $10,000 per cash cup. 
not to mention that they were having FNCSs every season and there would be prize pools in the qualifiers. In season X, the season right after the World Cup, right after they gave away $30 million and spent more than that flying everybody out and flying out all their families. We had five weeks of trio qualifiers and in the finals of each week, they would give away $32,000 on EU, not even to mention the other regions. Just on EU, that is $150,000 just from first place for the five weeks. And they gave away $300,000 to the winner of that FNCS. Even though everybody likes to see first place get more money, I like how the prize pools are more spread out for the cash cups too. I hate seeing the same names at the top of every cash cup leaderboard. I like how in finals now you're guaranteed money if you make top 50. And the best change they've ever made to cash cups is the victory cash cups. Even though they're less skillful and someone with 30 kills can come second and get no money. I still think it's better for the game because it gives players that drive to earn money because it's so easy. And with all that information, I'm going to put this take in S. Now I'll give you my hot take. Epic is the best video game company of all time. Even though they don't have good communications and it seems like there's cheaters in every tournament, they're still easily the best. Epic is a very smart company and they know what they're doing every time. Like what I was talking about in the victory cash cups. It gives the average player a drive to play the game more and earn money. But if it was the old cash cup format, they wouldn't even play because they know they can't come top 50. So with those players playing the game more because they know they can make money a lot easier, they'll spend more money on V-Bucks and make Epic more money. So to simplify that, my hot take is that Epic is the best video game company in the world. So our next hot take comes from Boji and he says mechanics are easier than aim on controller. Now I used to play controller, but I feel like this is a very bad hot take. I don't feel like mechanics are easier than aim on controller, I feel like it's whatever you practice more is easier. You see everybody free building and practicing their mechanics all the time no matter what input they're on but you never really see people practicing their aim. In Fortnite, I don't think anything is easier than something else, I think it's whatever you practice much will become easier to you. So after all that, I'm going to put this take in D. Next up, we have a hot take from iSmooth and he says NA pros are better than EU. I feel like the tier 1 pros in NA are better than the tier 1 pros in EU, but the average EU player is better than the average NA player. And that just comes from the amount of people they have in EU compared to NA. The more people you have on a region, the better the average player will be. I feel like the tier 1 pros in EU are a lot more inconsistent than NA pros. On NA, you always see the tier 1 pros at the top of the leaderboard in grand finals or finals of a cash cup. But if you go to EU, the best players like Cami and Seti, Tayson, and Mustache, they tend to go down towards the 10th to 5th place. Now I'm not saying that 5th or 10th is a bad placement in Grand Finals or Cash Cup, but when you look at NA, the best players are always in the top 3. So overall, I'm going to put this take in A. Next up, we have a hot take from Timothy and he says we need a solo FNCS. I do think a yearly big solo event will be good for the game because we get to see who has improved and who has gotten worse in solos, but I do not think a solo FNCS will be good at all. A lot of pros are quitting with the state the game's in now and a solo FNCS will only make that worse. But I do wish we had like a solo all-stars every year. So even though I am a big solos hater, I still can respect this take, so I'm going to put it in B. Our second to last hot take comes from my duo I'm and he says duos is the only good comp game mode. Now any game mode can be good if there's a good loot pool behind it but I do think that duos is a good consistent game mode. Like I was saying about solo FNCS, nobody wants to play a solo FNCS and for the casuals it's really hard for a trio FNCS because they have to get two of their friends. I think duos is a very good middle ground because you only need one person. And it's not like it's a big game mode, it's only two people where if it was squads, the best players on NA would play with the other three best players and they would run every event. So I do agree that duos is the best comp game mode, but I do think it matters on the loot pool in the season. So with all of that, I'm putting this take in A. So our last hot take comes from Clix's ex-teammate. We have everybody's favorite streamer, Somerset. Wait, we got so Oh, not Somerset, her boyfriend, Blake. I thought we were getting Somerset, what happened? Okay, it doesn't look like we have Somerset, but we have the next best thing, her boyfriend. And in Blake's hot take, he says people that are good at Fortnite aren't really that good, they just have good RNG. And I completely agree with that. Not only is there RNG on zones, there's RNG on loot, there's RNG on drop spots, whether you're conned or not. But I do think that is to be expected because it is a battle royale. I'm not saying that Cooper and Mira had good RNG and that's why they won at global championships. I just think there are some tier 1 players that get overly lucky and that's why they do so good. I mean, if you look at Benji Fishy, Benji Fishy is easily one of the best players of all time, and I'm not hating on him for this at all, but he would literally pull every zone. Not only would he pull every zone, he just had some crazy RNG, and people would start saying Benji RNG to pull the zone. 
Even though it's a battle royale and RNG is to be expected, some people are just overly lucky, so I'm gonna put this take in S. But that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys wanna see a part two, make sure you guys leave your takes in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and consider becoming a member. But until next time, see you guys later.